Welcome to this video lecture on the subject optical and microwave engineering. Now we are going to discuss about microwave T junctions. So these are microwave passive components. So microwave passive devices are used inside the microwave measurements instruments and they are used to combine the microwave or it is used to divide the signal. So the signal can be split or combine or filter or attenuate. So these are the um, functions of microwave passive components. So for example, we have power divider, RT junctions, directional couplers, magic T, attenuators and resonators. And today's class we are going to discuss about T junctions. So microwave T junction is an intersection of three waveguides. So it is uh, in the form of English alphabet T. So here we have a three waveguides. So intersection of three waveguides. So we can see in this diagram. So here the microwave circuits a waveguide or coaxial line with three independent ports is commonly referred to as a T junction. So they are used to connect a branch or section of the waveguide in series or parallel with the main waveguide. So based on this there are two basic types E plane T or it is known as the series T. Second one is H plane T it is known as sun T. So it uh, is used to split or combine the power in the waveguide system. So first one E plane T. So it is also known as the series T. So how it is formed here the axis of the side arm so there are three ports you can see port 1 and port 2 are collinear arms so it is the main waveguide the so side arm is attached to the width of the waveguide so it is parallel to the electric field of the main waveguide so a rectangular slot is cut along the broader dimension of the long waveguide and the side arm is attached so here it is known as the side arm or E arm so when the waves are fed into the side arm that is considered the input is given to port 3 that is E arm the waves appear at port 1 and 2 so the input is divided among port 1 and 2 so how it is divided means it is in equal magnitude and opposite phase so the S parameters can be related as S13 equal to minus S23. So here the, it is known as the difference arm because the power out of port 3 is proportional to the difference between the two when we are giving inputs from port 1 to port 2. So the third port is called as the difference arm. So next uh, from based on the properties of the E-plane T, we can derive the scattering matrix of the E-plane junction. So because it has three ports, so we can write 3 cross 3 matrix for E-plane T from S11 to S33. Now we are going to consider the property of E-plane T. So S23 equal to minus S13. So we can apply all the properties of the S matrix in this equation. So we are applying diagonal property where S33 equal to 0 and symmetric property we are going to use so transpose elements are equal so and then unity property for lossless junction so here the conjugate term multiplied by or is S matrix is equal to identity matrix that is S into S star equal to I so the S is the original S matrix and the S star is the conjugate of S matrix. It is equal to identity matrix or unit matrix. So by solving this uh, equation, so we are taking the row 1, column 1 of S matrix and row 2, column 2 and row 3, column 3. So from this we are going to solve S parameters. So where we are getting S11 equals S22 and then after solving the equation 8 we get s13 value as 1 by root 2 so from the s matrix relation we are substituting the s13 value and we get the relation as s11 equal to s12 equal to s22 and the uh, another parameter is s11 which is 1 by 2 so this is the final scattering matrix for e plane t junction so next we are going to 
see about h plane t it is also known as shunt t so h plane t is formed by cutting a rectangular slot along the width of the main waveguide and attaching the another waveguide so it is known as the h arm so we can compare the e plane and h plane t so in the e plane t it is e arm here it is h arm where it is the uh, it is known as the uh, sum arm in h plane t because the uh, the axis of the side arm is shunting the electric field or parallel to the h field of the main waveguide so when we are giving input to port 1 and port 2 so the output at port 3 will be in phase and additive so it is called as the sum arm so it is the important property of h plane t so in this diagram you can see port 1 and port 2 are collinear arms it is the main waveguide and port 3 is attached in its uh, side it is width of the main waveguide so it is the h arm or side arm so we can similarly we can write our s parameters so what is the difference here is uh, here s23 becomes s13 both are equal s13 equal to s23 there is no negative uh, sign so because here the port 3 is divided uh, port 3 input is divided among port 1 and 2 equally in phase and same magnitude so s13 equal to s23 so this is the only difference in deriving the s matrix of um, h plane t remaining are same as the e plane t so we can apply the zero property and unity property and symmetry property of s matrix so we get the equations like this and solving s13 becomes 1 by root 2 so more or less similar values we are getting for uh, uh, h plane t so we can compare this with the final equation of h plane t okay, we can have a small assessment why e plane t junction is called as a series t so the answer is the axis of the side arm is parallel to the electric field and this junction is the e plane t junction so this is also called, called as voltage or series junction where ports 1 and 2 are 180 degree out of phase with each other so the third arm is attached along the uh, broader dimension of the e plane t where the signal is divided among the uh, two ports equal and opposite face to each other second question is the diagonal elements of s matrix of resistive t junction are zero here we are using this properties of s matrix and the third question is why third port is sum arm is h plane t so why it is sum arm it is the question because the output taken at the port 3 will be in in phase and additive that is the port 1 and 2 inputs are added and obtained at the port 3 so it is known as the sum arm thank you for listening this lecture